Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Carlo Villanueva, and today I'm here with my colleagues, uh, Wesley Rank, uh, Christian Enderby, and Adam Gomez. And today we're going to be doing our project proposal, which is on the crime analysis of New York cities. So I'll go on ahead and start with my part, which is the research questions and main objective. Here we have what are the hotspots for different types of crimes in a city and how can these law enforcement resources be allocated more effectively. And we have here to identify and analyze the geographic and temporal patterns of various types of crimes in a city in order to develop data-driven strategies for optimizing the allocation of law enforcement resources, uh, ultimately enhancing public safety and reducing criminal activity. So a bit more on the on the research question. Um, so this research question, it actually aims to identify specific geographic areas within a city where different types of crimes are concentrated. So these areas, which are often referred to as hotspots, they could vary depending on the type of crime. So for example, uh, we have burglaries where they may be more prevalent in residential neighborhoods, while drug-related offenses could be concentrated in certain districts. And understanding these hotspots is very crucial for pinpointing areas that have the highest crime rates. And regards to uh, the allocation of the resources, um, we can determine how law enforcement resources, including police officers, technology, and budget, how they can be allocated more effectively. And this would involve a strategic assessment of where and when the resources are needed the most, and based on the identified uh, hotspots and crime patterns. And a, a bit more on the main objective, uh, we're, we're seeking to identify and analyze specific geographic areas within the city where different types of crimes are most prevalent. And this would involve a comprehensive examination of crime data, uh, considering factors such as the type of crime. We have property crime, uh, violent crime, drug-related offenses, and their distribution across the city. And uh, in addition to the geographic analysis, uh, our study aims to uncover temporal patterns and crime occurrence. And this would involve looking at when certain crimes are more likely to happen, such as uh, during specific times of the day, days of the week, uh, or seasons. And understanding these patterns is very crucial for optimizing uh, law enforcement resource allocation. And that's it for my part, and I'll go ahead and pass it to the next person. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christian, and I'm going to be presenting the geographical region of the project and explain the potential value of the project. So we chose New York City and the five boroughs, which are the Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, and Staten Island. We chose New York City because it is one of the most populated and diverse cities in the whole world. The city experiences a wide variety of crime. This diversity allows for examination of different types of criminal activities and their hotspots. New York is also technically advanced and has made large investments in data collection and analysis. Next, I will go over the potential value of the project. So this project holds significant potential value for multiple reasons. First is crime reduction. Determining and concentrating on crime hotspots can help lower crime rates. Law enforcement can prevent criminal activity, respond to incidents more quickly, and catch offenders more successfully by strategically allowing allocating resources. Next is public safety. Better resource management improves both the general standard of living for locals and visitors. Communities feel safer when law enforcement is more visible and responsive in high crime regions, which can have advantageous social and economic effects. Next, we have savings. The city and taxpayers could save money if law enforcement resources were allocated more efficiently. It is possible to lessen the need for widespread and frequent expensive policing methods, such as ongoing controls or maintaining a sizable force, police force by concentrating attention on crime spots. Next is resource optimization. The project may contribute to the efficient use of law enforcement resources. This allows for distribu distribution of officers, resources, and funds to the regions that most need them, which enhances the efficiency and accountability of the entire system. 
Next, we have crime prevention. By focusing on high crime areas, law enforcement can not only respond to crimes, but also take steps to avoid them. Community policing, outreach campaigns, and educational programs might be included in this. Last two are customized operations and scalability. For customized operations, we have this project and direct uh, targeted interventions such as increased patrols, covert operations, and the dispatch of specialist units to deal with the specific kinds of criminal activity in hotspot locations. Scalability and re replicability. This project's techniques and results can be replicated in other cities and areas that are dealing with similar issues, helping to improve national strategies for crime prevention and law enforcement. Next, we have possible spatial analysis methods. Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gomez, and I'll be going over the spatial analysis methods that we'll be using in this project. Um, the two methods we'll be using are the Huff gravity model and location allocation. The reason we're using these two methods is to answer the question, what are the hotspots for different types of crimes in the city, and how can law enforcement re resources be allocated more effectively? So our ultimate goal is to be able to prevent crime or detect crime at a faster rate in New York City, and specifically these locations right here. So the first one is the Huff gravity model. This model basically predicts the chance of a criminal event happening at a specific location from the patterns we gather from our data. Um, more specifically, the distance from the location is what Huff gravity model focuses on. So as you can see in this image over here on the right, these dots right here are certain locations. It could be like jewelry stores, Apple store, phone store, whatever the case may be. Um, Huff gravity model focuses on the distance a crime happens from a certain location. So as you can see over here with these blue arrows, um, this is just an example. This has the highest crime rate from the distance of let's say a jewelry shop. Once we figure out this location, we'll be able to implement tactics and strategies which comes into play through a location allocation um, this method is then used to place police stations security cameras um, surveillance in general to these hot spots so let's say a jewelry store right like this red example up here we'll place a police station near it to be able to detect the crime or just prevent it or respond to it at a quicker um, rate as you can see in these images um, this police station, let's say the police station covers a grand majority of area, but let's say this little spot over here, we might need to implement a police station there or more security cameras if we get a hot spot from our, gra our Huff gravity model. And this is why we believe these are the two best models for our project. And now I'm going to hand it over to Wesley so you can go over the data sources that we found for our project. Thank you. Hello, my name is Wesley Rank, and I will present be presenting my group's um, findings for our data sources. So through some research, I was actually able to find on New York City's website um, for open data that they actually publish um, official data from um, different agencies throughout the city, and one of them mainly being the New York Police Department, which is a very significant source of data for us since our main focus for our project will be on um, crime throughout New York City. So as you can see on the screen, the, um, this data set, it provides all valid crimes that have happened um, and have been reported through the NYPD. Um, and further, you will see that in the data set through the table preview, you can see that it gives us the date, the time, um, it gives us the type of offense, um, and also the what it is, like if it's a felony, misdemeanor, or a violation. And further, you could also see the different boroughs where the offenses took place. You can actually also see, if you scroll further, the latitude and longitude where the complaint was taken place at, and different um, sources like that. So this will be our main data source that we use in our project because it really provides a lot of what we need. It gives us the different types of crimes that um, happen throughout the city, as well as the boroughs, and if they have it, the street and place where each crime took place. 
We also, I also found through some research, another um, data set where it's, and it's the New York Police Department's arrest data, which isn't as strong, but it's still useful to look at um, because it gives us, so this data set, it gives us the arrest date and it gives us the type um, of crime. And it also gives us the different offense description as well as different um, data and different variables on the crime. And lastly, through our, my research, I also found NYPD also has a, a dashboard. So this is useful to look at and compare the um, what we find through our findings when we use it in ArcGIS. So this is also a useful tool for us to look at um, because it also, as stated before, it, it shows us the different types of crimes and also gives us a nice visualization to look at everything that's happening. So through these three sources, um, these are gonna be our main uh, references for data. And also we will be using the NYPD complaint data historic as our main data source to use. And yeah, that'll be it.